Good evening. Welcome to the 2015 Youth Public Safety Academy graduation. I am Al Chandler, Lieutenant of the Special Operations Division of the Suffolk Police Department. And on behalf of the City of Suffolk, the City of Suffolk Police Department, the Suffolk Fire Department, and the Western Tidewater Community Services Board, we would like to thank you for attending this celebration. At this time, I'd like to take a moment to recognize some of our special guests in attendance today. Vice Mayor Bennett, Councilman Fawcett, Councilman Goldberg, City Manager, Ms. Coffey Glenn, and Assistant City Manager, Mr. Roberts. At this time, please welcome our honorees, the 2015 Youth Public Safety Academy graduates. At this time, we'll have our invocation by Fire Department Chaplain Alan Lancaster. Before I pray, just let me say how thankful I am to be a part of this occasion. When I saw those young folks coming in and realized what you've accomplished and realized we stand before the God who gives us all breath, I'm just honored to be able to lead you in prayer tonight, and I trust God just bless you with, with, the, with God's blessing. Would you join me in prayer? Our gracious Heavenly Father, God, I thank you tonight that we can be together. I thank you, Lord, for these graduates, Lord, who have put the effort in, the, in this academy to learn the things they've learned and the skills they've learned and saw. And even, Lord, just the character that represents them, Lord, that they're willing to do that at their age. I just thank you for the parents, Lord, who are, took their time to make sure their, their sons and daughters were part of this great work. I pray you'd bless them for their efforts. And tonight, God, I pray that all of us would just be reminded of your grace, that we would see your hand of mercy upon us every day. For your word says, in the hand of God is the breath of all mankind. And we just thank you, Lord, for those who seek to serve and protect our police department, our firefighters, our rescue people that are always willing to run in where other people are running out. And I pray these graduates would see that kind of character, that they themselves might grow up to want to not only serve you, but serve mankind. So bless us all tonight in what we seek to do and be with all of us now that we might rejoice in you and we thank you for your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing and join me in honoring our nation with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. You may be seated. The Youth Public Safety Academy is a program that we are proud of here in the city of Suffolk. The Suffolk Police Department, Suffolk Fire Department, and Western Tidewater Community Services Board have teamed up for a mission that we are most honored to accept and complete. For the past nine weeks, every Tuesday and Thursday, along with some Saturdays, mentors have taken time out to sow seeds of strength, pride, and citizenship to our city's future. 
the young people that we honor today have had the chance to learn about fire safety, defensive tactics, police SWAT, the use of fire extinguishers, police canine, general health, ladder techniques, fire hoses, and forensics, along with a host of other topics. They experience being high up in the bucket of a fire truck and riding along with officers on patrol. These students have completed team building exercises and built strong and healthy relationships with many of those who serve our city with pride and distinction. I would like to take this time to thank our mayors, our city council, our city manager, Chief Bennett and Chief Scott for allowing us the time and assets to make this program a success. I would like to thank the mentors and all the presenters that had a hand in this project. I would also like to thank the parents for entrusting us with your young people. And most of all, thank you Academy graduates for your attention, your excitement, and your participation. At this time, I'd like to take just a few minutes to introduce our mentors in this program. I'd like to stay, take the time to make a special thanks to investigator, I'm sorry, fire investigator, Pam King. <laughs> Master Police Detective Joyce Williams. <laughs> Senior School Resource Officer Robert Burton. <laughs> Assistant Fire Marshal Gary Lassiter. Fire Training Officer, Richard Stevens. <laughs> Western Tidewater Community Services Board Prevention Specialist, Tico Winder. <laughs> and Special Operations Sergeant, Andre Sparks. <laughs> Without these people, this program could not be a success. I thank you for your hard work and your dedication. At this time, Investigator Pam King will come and present our Community Services Project. Good evening. It would be the mentor's desire to have our youth join us in our chosen fields of public safety like police or fire professions, or like Tico, who is a counselor with the Community Service Board, or maybe even CSI. <clears throat> But if not one of these components, maybe they could join something within our community. Something like giving back, such as what we do in one of the components added to the curriculum a few years ago in engaging our youth in the service to our community curriculum. First, we learn how to open our hearts to service by giving back to a community that took care of and provided for you. Like this academy, and these wonderful mentors, I might add. We take it upon ourselves to assess our community. That was the very first task that you were given in this project. You were to identify your issue. You were to then define your project, develop your action plan, and implement your project. Well, on April 2nd, lo and behold, while we were in training at the Fire Academy in Portsmouth, I was the on-call investigator listening to the radio, and we heard the call. And one of you said to me, Miss King, I think Quidesh lives on Clay Street. I said, uh-oh, I better go get the applications because I'm not real sure where Quidesh lives. I, I knew she lived downtown, but because we work with you guys each and every day and there's so many students, I wasn't real clear on the addresses. So I pulled that application, and I, as I listened to the radio, I heard the exposure being called out to 129 and 131. And in my world, that meant the house was on fire at 130. So I called my captain and I said to him, I believe that the house on fire is one of our students. I need you to put your eyes on that family and make sure that they are okay. He said, I've got them and they're okay. The house is not going to be. So we continued our training. 
We continued all that needed to be done on the task. I shared with the mentors what needed to go on, and we went back to Suffolk, and we finished our dinner. We then took Quadesh into a room, myself, Gary, and I, and we told her about her house on fire. I also shared with her that I lost my home to fire at the same age she was. And amazingly, she said, you know, we're going to be okay as long as I got my mom. So Joyce and the other detectives and mentors and those that were there that day, they spoke with you guys, and you were champs. You met us in that room that we were there, and you said, you know what, let's pray with her. And you did. So Gary and I put Kodesh in the car, and we met you at the scene, and one of you said, you know what? Ms. King, we don't need to finish that community service project. We are going to roll up our sleeves, and we are going to get this family back up on their feet today. So this was on the 2nd. We had our field trip to Camp Airhead on April 4th. So we, were, we knew that we were coming up against spring break. So we were going to have to move on getting a storage shed donated. The kids were like 90 miles a minute. They wanted, I mean, they came that Saturday morning. Instead of dealing with breakfast, they were bringing clothes and shoes and household goods. They were bringing change from their piggy banks. I mean, they were off to a running start while they were on spring break. They were calling us on their cell phones and just moving nonstop. And then they had their community service project. And that's where I would like Ms. Boyette to please come forward and Joyce Williams. You guys haven't been told the amount that you raised. This is off of the car wash alone. This is the highest amount that any academy class over the eight sessions have ever raised. Um, this amount goes to the family. This is not counted with the fund that has been sent up, sent in place, set in place by Raleigh, where the family is also from. Uh, her mom, Belinda, who is with us tonight as well, is driven in from Raleigh. But uh, Detective Williams, if you'd like to turn around, you guys raised thirteen hundred dollars. Originally, during, during the development of this project, their goal is uh, based on the nature of the project. And originally, somebody threw out the figure of 250. Well, that was before we knew what the project was going to actually be, and then they came up with 1,000. So um, they also, the day of the car wash, we had a vehicle set up that collected donations as well for the family. Today, Ms. Boyette, we have her in a home in, in the downtown area of Suffolk. It's still a work in progress. <laughs> We have some yard work to do soon, um, and we are steadily getting things in. My uh, hallway is full. We're still collecting, but um, and they also we also have about seven hundred thirty-five dollars that's come in from Raleigh in addition to that amount. So, yeah. So you guys did a great job, but I, I want you to know that in raising these amount of funds, what what this kind of project does was enabled the family to get the power on, to get, uh, you know, things in place that you don't think about. You know, somebody like me who lost their home to fire, you know, I was your age, Quadesh. I didn't know what my family was dealing with. Now I know walking through the journey with your mom, um, it was a lot that my parents had to deal with. But you guys are going to get there. You, you're going to be okay. And um, God bless your family. Thank you. At this time, please turn your attention to the screens for a montage of photos taken during this year's Academy.
We will now have remarks by our city manager, Ms. Cuffey Glenn, followed by Police Chief Bennett and Fire Chief Scott. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, good evening, Vice Mayor, members of City Council, Chief Scott, Chief Bennett, and staff. Congratulations to all of the graduates. Tonight, we celebrate your success. Continue to believe in your abilities. Gandhi said, a man or woman is but the product of his thoughts. What he thinks, he becomes. Tupac, the rapper, said, if you can believe it, you can achieve it. Thank you once again for participating in this program and making it a success. Thank you to the staff for the hard work that you put in to making this program one of the wonderful additions to the city of Suffolk. And also, the mayor sends her regrets and congratulations to all of you. Once again, congratulations and thank you. Good evening, everyone, and congratulations to our newest graduates of the Youth Public Safety Academy. Over the last 10 weeks, they were taught quite a few themes, among them commitment, leadership, teamwork, self-confidence, and building relationships. I believe 21 kids uh, were signed up initially for this program, and we have, I believe, 15 sitting before you. So that says something special about you, 15. Uh, you all stuck with the program. You saw it through, and that's something very important you all have to learn uh, in life. You have to see things through. You just can't quit. Always follow things through to the end. Uh, we've already talked a little bit about some of the topics. I'm going to add a few that weren't mentioned. Uh, they were taught a little bit about active shootings in schools, what happens, what to do. Uh, texting while driving and parents. I'm going to talk to you all a little bit about that right now. It's not a good thing. We've had multiple very serious accidents, and we believe possibly even a uh, fatality. It's hard to prove sometimes. But a lot of people that are texting on our roads uh, get hurt and get hurt seriously. Uh, it's not a good thing, and we hope that when you all get your learners and your license, you don't text. Pull over if you need to text. That's, that's what I do. Uh, energy drinks, drugs, workplace etiquette. There's a way you conduct yourself at work, and there's a way you conduct yourself at home and in your private life. It's very important that you conduct yourself appropriately at work to keep your job and to do well in your career. Dating violence, and of course, I think we mentioned about all the operational components you were taught uh, from fire and police. I also want to thank our instructors. Uh, Y'all do a great job every year. You did a great job this year. Parents, what you may not know is we don't pull these instructors and say, okay, go teach this school for 10 weeks. They do their job every day and then go teach this school. So it's above and beyond. So, uh, And they're not made to do this. They volunteered to do this. They want to do this. They take great pride in this program. So please join me again in thanking them. In closing, I want to speak uh, once again to our graduates. I got three or four things here that I hope you all learned and take away from this school. I hope you learned that to get anywhere in life, you have to work hard. You have to work. You have to work. Not your mom and your dad, uh, not me, not your mentors. You all have to do the hard work. Working together as a team is always important. You can't always get everything you want to get done by yourself. You need help, and it's good to have a team to help you get there. It's very important uh, to respect each other, but it's even more important to respect yourself. Think about that, and you'll understand what I'm saying one day. And the last thing I'd like to say is very little comes to you in life and lands in your lap. If you want something, you, you have to go get it. Okay? So don't forget that. As you get a little bit older, you're in school now, you need to do good, make good grades, prepare yourself for after school, what you're going to do in your job. Uh, everybody's going to be looking at what you do from here on out. When you go to get your first job, they're going to look at your grades. They, you, come, you come to the police department, we will talk to your neighbors. We will talk to people you might have had your first couple of little jobs with during the summer. So everything you do from here on out is very important, okay? Don't forget that. It will benefit you in the long run. And once again, I want to congratulate 
each one of you and everybody in this room is very proud. Congratulations. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's a great honor to stand before you today as the fire chief of this great city. Uh, I am very, very proud of the graduates and, and talk just a bit in a moment uh, directly to you, but I'm very proud of you and your accomplishment. I want to thank the parents because I believe you deserve some thanks today too for um, getting the kids up, getting them ready for school, doing all the things you do, making sure that, that they're taken care of. Parents, thank you for being parents. Uh, it's not an easy job all the time. Sometimes you get to make the tough decisions sometimes, but I am a living and walking witness that uh, good parents are important, and I'm, I'm so thankful to my mom and, and all the people in my life, and I just wanted to just, just pause for a moment and just say, parents, thank you. Thank you. I want to uh, also thank um, um, our mayor, members of city council, and our city manager uh, for continuing to support this program. This program is important in our community because you're looking at our future sitting on these two rows right here. And I think that our investment in them will pay big, big dividends for us in the future. And we're setting that right now for them. And so Mayor Council and our city manager, thank you for allowing us to just continue to invest in our young people. Uh, I want to thank the sponsors, too, um, those people who do a few things here and there, and, and uh, I'm sure we could talk about all the sponsors that we've had, but I'm not going to try to name them. I'm just going to say we are appreciative of you saying that this effort is worth sponsoring because we believe it is. Mentors, I continue to just be in awe of you, and I want to turn around here because two are sitting behind me here, but I'm in awe of you and what you do because you work all day and you've decided that this is important. And I want to thank you for doing a little bit extra and for investing in our young people. Uh, I'm just, I'm so proud of you mentors for what you continue to do uh, in this community. And nobody's making you do it and you just keep doing it year after year. And I'm, I'm just impressed with, with, with your dedication to this program. So thank you mentors for what you do. Um, and finally, um, I want to, students, I want to talk to you just briefly on two things. One, don't rush your life. Enjoy being young. Enjoy being, growing up. Stop, as they say, to smell the roses. Don't be so fast to, to become an adult. Some people, we, we get so caught up in, when I get 13, I'm going to do this. When I get 18, I'm going to do this. When I get 20, I'm going to be out on my own. I'm going, to do, I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Well, I want to tell you something. You never, you never stop following rules. You have the rules of your, of your house and your mom and your dad's rules um, and your family structure. The rules, they are important. And this is important right now that you follow the rules because when you, when you grow up and you get a car, you start driving, uh, you're going to have to follow the rules of the road. When you get a job, you're going to have to follow those rules. Some of you will even go on to create jobs. That's the kind of greatness I see in this group. Those will go out and create opportunities for other people. So, and in the, in the last thing I want to talk about very quickly is responsibility. You're going to have to take responsibility for your lives, for your actions, for your words, and for your deeds. And don't let what you do in your young life, and I'm not going to come up with a scientific term here. I'm going to say it like I'm feeling it right now. Don't let what you do in your young life mess your whole life up. Amen. Now, I want you to think about that. Because there are things that you can do as you go up through your age, as you continue to get older and older, that will never allow you to wear the badge of a, Suffolk police officer to ride a fire truck and to serve the citizens as a member of Suffolk Fire and Rescue. You can do things 
that will mess that up for you forever. I don't want you to miss that opportunity. I want you to have every opportunity to be all you can be. But it's responsibility. And you got to take responsibility for your actions. So thank you very much. I'm very proud of you. Congratulations to you. And thank all of you for being here. Thank you so much. At this time, our honorees will begin to receive their certificates of completion. Hello to everyone. I'd like to personally thank everyone for coming out tonight. It means a lot to the graduating class to see that there are so many people behind them. It means a lot to them. First graduate is Kira Carr. Al Drew Chapman. Joaquin Chesson. Rakeem Davis. Jaquez DeShore. Adriana Fields. <laughs> Michaela Frazier. Tatiana Goodman. <laughs> T. 
to Kira Ingram. Amani Johnson. <laughs> Mr. Anthony Johnson is not here, but he is to be recognized, Anthony Johnson. <laughs> Quadesh O's. Brianna Rogers. <laughs> Kwamisha Savage. Linwood Worthington. <laughs> Thank you, and this is the 2015 graduating class. Before we close, I would like to recognize Councilman Johnson. This concludes our pro program. Please join us after the ceremony for light refreshments in the conference room adjacent to these chambers. Again, thank you for coming.